Hello, everybody, and welcome to Eric's blind run of the Circle and Dawn. This should not say Deck Showcase. Give me a second. This should say none other than the disappearance at the Twilight Estate. It's so long. It can, it can poke its little head in over there. I think that's fine. Yeah, I like it. All right, so we're going to do something a little bit different for this. He's uh, my favorite letter. For this, uh, uh, it is mine, too. Actually, yeah. it's a J. It makes sense for you. It makes sense for me. All right, Eric, go for it. Read that. Sunday, November 22nd, 1925. Arkham, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. I can't say that I word. can't either. Though All Hallows' Eve is nearly a month past, a grim melancholy lingers through the town. Each morning, a thick fog permeates <clears throat> the streets. Nights are beginning to grow longer, and if you ask around town, you'll hear people swear that it's getting darker, too. But despite the gloomy mood, progress continues in the sleepy town of Arkham. The election of Nathaniel Rhodes to the United States Senate has upstanding members of the community feeling optimistic about the town's future. And tonight, at his well-appointed estate in French Hill, a man named Joseph Miguer hosts the Silver Twilight Lodge's Charity Gala, an annual members-only event that will turn deadly for several attendees. Each player must choose one of the following neutral investigators to control for the duration of this prologue. Gabriela Misra, uh, Jerome Davids, Penny White, or Valentino Rivas. So I chose just one because it requires a bunch of setup. I chose the fighter one for you. Thank you. It better be Valentino. Okay, well, that's that's good, too. Actually, that's really sick. Um, throughout this prologue, you will play through this character's story and make choices that will determine their fate. Your choice of investigator has no direct effect on your standard investigator deck, though the, though the results of the prologue will influence the story. Do not assemble an investigator deck for any neutral investigator. Instead, gather the cards listed on its reverse side. These cards will be used in that investigator's unique setup. How many players are there? Two. Continue. Uh, Gabriella and Jerome. Jerome. In the missing person section of your campaign, you've already done this, I assume. The app will do it for you. Okay. Well, for us. As an alternative to playing the prologue, oh, that's funny. Uh, no, we're going to play the prologue. Thank you. It allows you to skip the prologue by drawing tarot cards. So is this where tarot cards came from? They came from the return to for this. So that was a return to rule for this. Okay. But tarot cards are like the thing in this whole campaign. Fantasy Flight, you're doing amazing. Like this is what? My third? Fourth. My fourth. And it's every time it's fresh. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Yosef Meager announces, raising a glass of champagne and a toast. A hush descends on the room until only the crackle of the fireplace and whispers of gossip can be heard. Allow me to welcome you all to my home for this year's charity gala. We have some very upstanding citizens here tonight, and I thank all of you for your hard work and generosity. Cheers and murmurs of agreement fill the room. Many of, their, of the guests raise their glasses to Valentino, one of the most esteemed members of the lodge this year, who sits at the guest of honor table, which is nearest to the fireplace. Yosef's assistant, Jerome, blends into the wall behind Yosef, discreetly checking his pocket watch. In another corner of the room, the head housekeeper, Penny, walks from table to table, filling empty glasses and collecting dirty salad plates. Each of you has done great deeds in the name of the Silver Twilight Lodge and our historic city, Yosef con continues. Next year, we will continue to shoulder this burden and do what must be done for the sake of progress. Jerome steps forward quietly, interrupting Yosef's speech with, an un with the unassuming confidence that comes from years of trusted service. He taps Yosef lightly on his shoulder and shows him the time. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm already out of time. Thank you all very much for attending. Yosef bows. Yosef concludes bowing. Polite applauses Applause rises from the audience, and Yosef walks briskly towards the parlor, followed closely by his, by his assistant. 
Two servants collect coats as latecomers trickle into the manor, and Gavriella, Yosef's head of security, watches over the entrance with hard eyes and a clenched jaw. I have that problem, too. <laughs> Has Mr. Sanford arrived? Yosef asks curtly, tapping his polished leather shoe on the floor. I'm afraid not, Jerome replies, flipping through the last pages of the estate's guest book. He should be here any minute, Mr. Meager. Good. I want there to be no problems whatsoever when he arrives. Am I understood? Yosef calls out to Gavriella. Make sure he is well protected. Gavriella nods, patting the handle of her 45 and her shoulder holster. Joseph turns his attention back to his assistant. And have Penny make sure the main course is kept good and hot while we mate for, wait for Mr. Sanford's arrival. Not a single slice is to be served without his presence. Not even for Mr. Rivas, sir? Jerome asks, glancing at Yosef over the rim of his glasses. Yosef pauses for a moment, considering. Pour Mr. Rivas another glass of champagne, and I'm sure he will not complain. Also, I'm still waiting on those accounts. I asked you about earlier today? Don't forget, Yosef says, clapping his assistant on the shoulder before walking back into the banquet hall. Jerome nods obediently and heads upstairs. Soon, after the dark mist would appear, and nothing would be the same. You want me to read the theirs as well? Yeah, for Gabriel? Gabriel. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. You stand guard as instructed, waiting for Mr. Stanford to appear. By now, the remaining guests have filled, filed, or filled, it could, that, it could, that could be that. Either or. Yeah. Either or. Into the banquet hall, and you can hear the sounds of merriment and drinking coming from beyond the wooden door behind you. You pay them no mind, remaining vigilant. Years of fighting and discipline have taught you to be ready for anything even at a harmless banquet like this. Just as you begin to ponder whether your talents are being wasted under Mr. Meager's employ, a dark mist invades the parlor through the front door and the window frames, flooding the room. At first you believe it to only be the evening fog seeping through the manor's entryway, until you begin to notice that everything the mist touches seems to have decayed, as though aged hundreds of years. You step back cautiously, keeping a hand on the grip of your weapon, just in case. Never in all your years have you seen something like this. An unnatural chill spreads through the room, and shivers run up your spine. As the ashen mist finishes pouring in, it coalesces into a singular form, a humanoid figure wrapped in shadows. It raises its hand and points at you with a charred, blackened finger. You unholster your far firearm and point it at the creature, allowing your training to take over. Don't come any closer, you shout. The thing watching you from the entrance is unfazed. Its ethereal form begins to glide towards you, dark mist crawling over the carpet in its wake. I warned you, you growl, and a thunderous shot echoes through the parlor as you squeeze the trigger. The bullet rips a hole in the figure's head like a rush of air billowing through a column of smoke. The mist only stitches itself together and the thing continues to drift your way, reaching out menacingly. Nothing could have prepared you for combat with such an unnatural enemy. Faced with no other option, you, f you turn and flee up the staircase nearby, pausing to squeeze off several more shots at the top. The bullet, the bullets that take, <laughs> oh my goodness, the bullets that make their target simply pass harmlessly through the ghostly figure, striking the door behind it. A few stray shots shatter a column of the staircase's wooden balustrade. You want to read yours? Sure, I'll read mine. My name's Jerome. I carefully flip through the pages of Mr. Meager's ledger, looking for accounts he inquired about. You have served Mr. Meager faithfully for almost a decade, and he trusts you with sensitive information like this. A point of pride for you. While you're often curious about your employer's business, you've never pried into his personal matters. Not until tonight, anyway. You adjust your glasses and lean forward as you turn the page reading Mr. Meager's request. Some of the names on the list you recognize, Rivas, Gensler, Fairmont, Rhodes, Wick, John Wick, but many are names you've never heard before, let alone seen affiliated with Mr. Meager's work. Lindquist, Konstantinov, Magro, Atkinson, Lamar, just how deep do Mr. Meager's connections go? 
Strange as that may seem is the list of names on the page afterwards that raises your hackles. While it is clear that the names on the previous page are associated mis associates of Mr. Meagers, or at least prominent members of the Lodge, you can only assume that this next series of names is people your employer is targeting. For what? You cannot say. You stand next to Joseph's desk and record the list in your pocket journal carefully, making sure to keep the name in the exact order they appear in Mr. Meager's ledger. Your hope that your suspicion is nothing more than the absurd imagination of an overworked secretary. Still, something about all this has you concerned. That and the sudden draft of frigid air that is somehow wafted into the room. Your gaze naturally drifts to the windows, at which point you scream out in shock and lose your balance, stumbling backward into Mr. Meager's desk. Uh, pressed up against the office window is a host of screaming faces emerging from the mist, or perhaps composed of it. Their ghostly hands press against the glass, their eyes hollow and empty. Your reading glasses clatter to the ground and shatter under your heel as you scramble to the other side of the office. You don't realize that you dropped your pocket, pocket journal in the chaos until it's too late. All right. I have gathered a bunch of cards. We're going to put the Spectral Watcher at And me. thus we are playing Arkham. It's a card game. Uh... Cooperative for up to four people. The Spectral Watcher is here. Ooh. 353 Ancient One Spectral Elite, Alert and Hunter. When he is defeated, instead of discarding it, heal all damage from it, disengage from all investigators and exhaust it. It does not ready during the upkeep phase this round. It's beautiful. The artwork in this one is gorgeous so far. Uh, starting with you, Eric, on the back side of your card, there is setup instructions, so you need to follow that, and these are going to be cards that you have for it. Okay. I begin playing the Victorian Halls. I place one damage on the Spectral Watcher. Search the gathered cards for one copy of Fate of All Fools. <laughs> place it into your threat area. All right, here's your Fate of All Fools. Oh, no. So we can put you, can put you here. The Spectral Watcher is so cool. When, when, when can I play him? You can't, you can't. When can I be him as a playable character? And then you can resolve all your other setup because you'll have your starting play area and then your start opening. I begin hand. with one resource instead of five. I have two ammo tokens remaining on it. Oh, that makes sense because I fired two shots in the story. That's cute. And you're like that. Okay. And then that is your opening hand. Is that it? That's it. Oh, and physical training. That wasn't it. That wasn't it. I've actually only played this scenario twice. You just not like it? Uh, it's fun, but it's not something that I like to pull out in paper every time. Okay. Six, seven. Okay, I've got my seven cards, and I've got Fate of All Fools. Oh, I have to choose this. Uh, no, it's going to be in your threat area. Oh, okay. Interesting. All right, so I'm Jerome. I'm going to start in the office. I search the gather cards for a copy of... Um, of Sorry, I have to also grab an Obscuring Fog. So I grab Nether Misk and an Obscuring Fog. Ned, you should not be in here. How did you get in here twice? Just make sure there's nothing else. All right, so I spawn the Nether Mist in the office. So this guy's aloof, uh, investigates a location with the most clues, his prey. Uh, Nether Mist location gets haunted, Nether Mist attacks you. And then this one is gonna be a six shroud location. Uh, I begin the game with three resources instead of five. Mm -hmm. Wow, investigators are rich in this game. And uh, I don't get an opening play area. I just get my big ass hand. All right, um, Eric, there is no positive resolution for this scenario. <laughs> uh, sorry, I start with three instead of five. Yes. Um, investigators should strive to last as long as they can and gather as many clues as they can before their inevitable demise. Know that while cards can still be added to the victory display during this scenario, experience and victory points will not be gathered for it. Since these investigators do not have decks, ignore any instructions or effect that would cause them to draw cards or interact with player decks. Additionally, since the investigators don't have discard piles, each player card that would be placed in their discard pile is removed from the game instead. Good luck. You'll need it. Why don't you read our act and agenda? Judgment. There is no escaping fate. Hear the call and be reborn. Forced, after the do after doom is placed on this card, each investigator must take either one damage or one horror, two damage or two horror instead if there are five or more doom in play. 
Force, when an investigator is defeated, that investigator must advance this agenda. Do not remove any doom from this agenda when it advances. The Disappearance. Something terrible has invaded the home of Yosef Meager. In the moments that follow, you scramble to survive. Forced, when an investigator is eliminated, place each of that investigator's clue on this act instead of his or her location. Objective, discover as many clues as you can before your inevitable demise. All right. Messed up. I love this. We get to play the victims for once. We do. Okay. Do we gain resources? Uh, yes, we all gain resources. You're a normal person, you just don't have a deck or a discard pile. Okay, okay. <sighs> Who wants to go first? I can go first, because mine is going to be pretty basic. I'm going to gain a resource. I'm going to play Fingerprint Kit. has three supplies, and I can exhaust it to spend a supply to get plus one book for this investigation. And if I succeed, I discover additional clue in my location. I also am going to fast out a magnifying glass. Sick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, I'm going to, for my last action, I'm going to investigate. This is a six shroud location. I'm going to go six to six. I'm going to commit this curiosity, which puts me at nine to six. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we're just going to go 9 to 6 and just hope we don't draw the minus 4. If I do, everything's going to go bad. So let's just not. Let's just not. We're going to be fine. Minus 3! Okay. So I can discover two additional clues. Well, one additional clue, sorry. So we're going to go here. By the way, my ability is when an investigative location draws a treachery from the encounter deck, I can discard cards from my hand with a total of two book icons and cancel that card's revelation effect. Wild. Uh, and then I also will get to get rid of this. And then this card gets removed from the game. Okay, that is me. Okay. I've got to be thoughtful. Yeah, this is basically like a, a puzzle. Yeah. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move here. Mm -hmm. All right, lose two resources, haunted. For each resource you cannot lose from this again, of this effect, take a horror. Okay. Two clues here. Nice, nice, nice. Um, I'm going to spend my turn gaining a second, take another action to gain a second resource. Mm -hmm. And two to my two, so I'm not really good at that. I think we'll draw a card. <laughs> um, interesting, interesting, interesting. And that thing's aloof. Yes. Yeah, it's just hanging out here. Okay. Okay. Um, but that guy's going to come in. But I'm going to need to stay here because I'm going to want him to come to me instead of coming to you so I can open you up to more rooms. Because I'm going to want to lead him into the billiards room eventually. Mm -hmm. um, except I can't run very well, so I'm just going to have to shoot him <laughs> when he gets here. Yeah, just put a just put a bullet in his brain. Just put bullets in him. Um, so I think all I'll do is I'll get another resource. Cool. All right, enemy phase. This guy's going to come up here. Hey, buddy. We're going to put a Doom on this. After Doom is placed on any card, each investigator must either take a damage or a horror. I will take a damage. I'll take a horror. Nice. And then, Eric, you can draw the first evil card of the campaign. <gasps> Crypt Chill. Test Brain for if you fail. Choose and discard one asset you control. Okay, well, it'll probably end up being physical training. Yeah. I don't have good brains. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm going to discard physical training. Eric, you're going to take two damage. Okay. Oh, I should have gained a resource at the end of the turn. Oh, yeah, me too. 
Okay. No, wait. Why would I gain a resource to the end of the turn? Yeah, well, the upkeep. You always get one at upkeep. Yeah. We still have our upkeep. We just don't have a card to a deck to draw. Yeah. All right. Um. Uh, you're going to drag that guy to you, right? Yeah. That's the plan. I'm not going to move any further this turn. Okay. Um, my turn's going to be super boring. I'm just going to gain some resources. Interesting. For reasons. For reasons. I understand. Uh, I'm going to spend three. Nice. To put a guard dog into play. Heck, getting a little taste of your real Yorick deck. Getting a little, little, a little Yorick. Just a little bit of Yorick. So that's my first action. Um... I think my second action will be to gain a resource. Nice. And then I'll spend them both to play first aid. Nice. All right, this guy's going to come in here. Yeah. He's going to attack you. Yeah. So I just take the damage? Yep. I'm going to take one brain. Put the damage on guard dog? Yeah, That's and so guard dog will deal him one damage. Nice. And then your ability triggers... Right, and I will gain the clue. Nice. Come with me, All right, scary go ghosty. <laughs> to a place of lots of... All right, would you take a damage or a horror? I'm going to take a horror. Uh, I'll take a horror. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I'll, take a, I'll take a damage. Nice. All right. I'm uh, in my danger zone. Your evil card. <laughs> Trap spirits. Test foot three. For each point you fail by, take one damage. If your creation is haunted, as an additional cost for an investigator to commit, he or she must resolve each haunted ability on this location. Okay. So I basically just can't commit to this. One to three. What could go wrong? So I take three damage. Ouchie. I'm gonna put it all on... How... How do I want to play this? No, I think I want to keep the soak. Let's see, I'm at two. Just doing some mental math here. Yeah, take your time. I'm going to have one dollar. Uh, I'm going to put one on the dog. Nice. And two on you? Two on me. Uh, I have this uh, Shapes in the Mist. Surge, resolve each haunted ability in my location. So I'll choose and discard this Hyper Awareness from my hand. Mm -hmm. And then that's going to surge into... Um, but test... doesn't this mean it also attacks you? Oh, yes, thank you. Resolve each haunted. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. So we'll take one and one. All right, test brain four. If you fail, put Terror into the Night into the agenda deck. If you fail by three or more, it gains Surge. If there are three copies of Terror in the Night next to the agenda deck, we discard them and we each take three horror. Um, I'm going to go two to four and just trust that I'm going to draw a zero. Nice. All right. So we just put this over here. Cool. But it does not gain search. Nice. Do you want to start us off? Yeah, I'll gain a resource. That'll attack you? No, no, just from upkeep. Oh, well, he just missed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we also take one more damage because of Doom going on the track. Oh, I've right? already done that. I've already oh, done okay. that. Well, I think you did too. I, told, I said a lot yeah, and you right. did it. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to shoot the ghost. Heck yeah. Um, so I'm going. Five, two, three. Nice. Yeah, five to three. Good luck. It's a minus three. If you resolve, if you fail, this is an attack or evasion type, resolve each haunted ability on your location. So lose two resources. For each you cannot lose, take a horror. I'm fucked. <laughs> oh, no, you lost. You were able to lose one resource. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Good as new. Shoot again? Yep. Well, you know, at least he'll... Hey, all right, two damage. Perfect. And then... So that was two actions. Your gun's out of bullets. My gun's out of bullets. Um, four to three. I don't want to risk that. 
Uh, this is gonna sound crazy. I'm, t I'm tempted to provoke an attack from him. Yeah, can you move into this room? Yeah. So you provoke an attack. Mm hmm And he will get bit, bit by the dog. Yeah. So then he'll go here. But I think also this, after an enemy attacks you, even if that attack was canceled, I think you also still get to grab that clue if you want. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm not doing so hot. That's okay. We were going to die no matter what, right? Oh, right. What? What? I'm at three. I'm at two. Yeah, you're at two. All right. My turn. Yep. We're going to fingerprint kit. I'm going to go six to four. I'm going to commit this while it's still good to go eight to four. Nice. There's two clues on this location. I think it's probably why you grab the clues. Yeah. That's terrible. That's terrible. That's a bad time. Right, we get hit. But you know, it wouldn't be this scenario if that didn't happen, right? This is incredible. I'm loving this. All right, we're going to investigate again. Yep. I'm going to go four, five. So four, five, six, seven, eight to four. Nice, nice. Well, oh, I should choose a discard card from my hand, huh? It's going to be this. This mine over matter. I know I play badly because I'm not going to have time to play the rest of cards in my hand. All right. I am up four. Cool. Okay. So we're going to grab two clues. Mm -hmm. And then I have uh, connect the dots. Nice. So after you discover the last clue, your location, I discover two clues at a location with a lower printed shroud value. So I'm going to grab these clues. <gasps> Sick. And then I am going to just run away. <laughs> And I'm going to go hide in the corner and just try not to die. I have one card left in hand. All my resources. Listen, I'm going to try and keep the Spectral Watcher if I survive this next mythos. Let's go. All right, let's go upkeep. Get your resource. Oh, oh, I, need, I need two. I need two resources to survive whatever's coming. All right, we should take a damage or a horror. Ouch. Oh, I'm fucked. Here you go. And your oh, evil card. Good luck. God. Good luck, soldier. Oh, God. When your turn begins, resolve each um, haunted ability at location. When your turn ends, okay, that's good. That's actually good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also got that. Nice. Mine's lose on action, sure. Okay, um, I'll go. Yeah. I'm gonna lose an action. Okay. I'm gonna move in here. Mm -hmm. uh, place one of your clues on the master bedroom. No thanks. Also, there's a ghost we can't enter here. Oh, okay. I'm gonna move in here. E each of your cards with at least one health takes one direct damage. Oh God, no. That's me. <laughs> That's <laughs> I'm that kidding. card. All right, I just gotta hope I draw a plus one on this Realm of Torment. Sick. My, my plan. No, it's a zero. All right, Eric, go for it. Uh, you must either discard an asset you control or take one damage. No, it's ha but haunted doesn't activate yet. No, but this always at the start of your turn. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'll discard an asset. Seems good. Um, I am going to go up to one, nice. to two, and then I'm going to spend a supply to heal. I'm in a shitty spot. <laughs> yeah. Either way. I'm going to reduce this one to two. Nice. And then for a fast action, oh, I'm playing Delay the Inevitable. Nice. All right. Um, upkeep. Yeah. All right. When this goes up to one. All right. We each take a damage or a horror. Yeah. Yeah. Take one more. Good luck, soldier. Thank Here's you. your card. <sighs> Test brain four. If you fail, put Terror of the Night into play next uh -oh. to the agenda. If you fail, fail by three or more, it gains Surge. Good luck. You're testing three to four. Hey, you passed I it. I passed That's it. That's actually ginormous. Holy cow. 
Because there's the third one. <gasps> so we're going to go two to four. I failed by three. Yeah. So this will surge. Thank God you passed that. Otherwise, we would have been toast. Uh, oh my God, I die. Oh. Resolve the haunted ability on each location. And then plus two shroud. So I actually will die at the start of my turn. Unless you can somehow get here and heal me from across the mansion. Dang. One, two, three. Nope. Nope. Oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go, Eric. Okay. I die. All right, so when an investigator is defeated, that agenda must... Have, when do you have to pay for that? When the mythos phase ends. So you'd have to pay for it now. Yeah. So you, you don't have two resources, so it'll get discarded. Yeah. All right. Uh, when investigators defeated, that investigator must advance this agenda. Do not doom from this agenda advances. In the missing persons section of your campaign log, next to your character's profile, make a record of that character's fate. So if you were defeated by Spectral Watcher, no. If you're defeated by a monster, no. If there was seven or more doom in play, when this agenda advanced, or you were defeated by horror, damage dealt by the force ability and agenda, would a record they disappeared into the mist. Otherwise, I was pulled into the Spectral Realm. And then I put all my clues here. I was hoping to get those two clues. Maybe I join you in the Spectral Realm. <laughs> I'm just trying to attack what's the best end. Like, do I, f do I wait for the Spectral Watcher to come in, or do I just die now? It's your call. Uh, oh, because you're thinking you could just take a damage? Yeah. It's your call. I'm going to die. All right. So you are also going to just be... Um, Lost in the Spectral Realm. Pulled into the Spectral Realm. That seems safer than dying to the Spectral Watcher. Probably. Just throwing it out there. All right. We did okay. Uh, no resolution was reached. Here you go. We can read the flavor for everyone at home. Mr. Sanford, thank you so much for coming. I know you are a busy man. Your, appreciate, your presence at tonight's meeting is very much appreciated. Yosef shakes Carl Sanford's hand firmly as he speaks. Sanford merely nods. I know you've just arrived, but I have some private matters to discuss with you. If that is all right, Yosef continues, his narrow eyes shifting back and forth between the men flanking Mr. Sanford. Very well. The elderly man nods to his two enforcers, who step aside to give him privacy. He cradles his hands behind his back, his stature impressive for his age. His discerning eyes fall on Yosef. What is the matter? Yosef leans closer. It's here, sir. It's here, in this very house. There is a quiet pause between the two men. And then, Carl Sanford smiles. In your campaign log, record X pieces of evidence were left behind. We did eight. That's good. We did good. It's pretty good. 9, 10, 11, 12. We did we, 66%. That's a pass. Um, We're getting into Arkham U. Have you seen the way that researchers are treated in yeah. this game? Yeah. We're definitely getting into Arkham U. Definitely. All right. What's the best you've ever done on this? All the clues? Uh, no, because I've only done it like twice. So I actually don't have a lot of experience with it. But we are going to go into the first scenario of The Circle Undone, where we're going to see Will York and Ash Campy do their thing, and they're going to dissolve the disappearance of the Twilight Estate, maybe. We're going to see what happens. I mean, we already know what happened. But, we, but they don't. We do as the reader, but our characters don't. So we have to forget it. Just knock it out of your head. Okay, I'll yeah. forget. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next week as we see scenario one, The Witching Hour. So we'll see you all then. Have a good one. And as always, a GG's.